Arcare. Welcome back. Here's where we're at. We've taken the hood and the trunk lid and we've completely flattened out all the orange peel using the 1000 3M wet dry paper. The next step is we're going to re-sand and for that we're stepping up to the 1500 grit. Now what this is going to do is it's going to refine our sanding marks, make them a lot more shallow before we go to the next step which is machine sanding with P3000. Again the whole idea is to remove the orange peel, finish out at a high grit level to make the buffing fast and easy and create that show car finish. So the guys are going to get started. We've already cleaned our water bucket. We're switching over to 1500 grit. We're going to go ahead and knock these two panels out. Now, my good friend Bruno Mass will stop by. Bruno, how you doing? Good, Mike, man. Good to be here. Hey, glad you could join us. This is a really fun project. Yeah, it looks like it, man. You guys are hard at work over here right now, but it looks like you've got a lot of work to go, buddy. And you know, one of the most important things when you're doing a project like this is the focus on the task at hand. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, it could be a little overwhelming when you see all this black here that needs work, so I guess it's piece by piece, right? And the way we're approaching this, since the painter went ahead and disassembled the complete car, is we are sanding panel by panel. Once we're all finished with the separate panels, we'll move over to the body. Gotcha, gotcha. Yep. All right, well, you were hard at work over here. I'm going to leave you alone for a few minutes and do a little investigating. Now, what's cool about this thing is the 69 AMX, and for me, you know, it's got race car roots to it. You know, this thing was a big, they call it a super gas car back in the, let's say, mid-80s. This thing was a very competitive car like a lot of the Vegas were back then and the bracket racing stuff. You'd see these all over your local tracks and Western Pro Headers is no stranger to that. Wes, man, tell me a little bit about the history of this AMX. The history of this AMX kind of goes back to the original 69 situation. The doctor happened to be one of 10 kids that the actual original Downing, Lou Downing, had gotten a car from actual AMC factory and started racing in the Superstock. This car was called Pete's Patriot. Our doctor we're doing our car for was actually one of those 10 kids. So this car actually has a little bit more history. The story wraps around the AMC theme very, very well. And of course, Bruno, you know him from Racing Comp. Congratulations on your uh, championship this year, by the way. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Not a big deal. It's awesome just to have you in the house. I really do appreciate you showing up today. But for the most part, when the son actually put this car away, thinking, well, it's tucked away in the barn, what everybody doesn't know is the doctor snuck over stuck a roll bar in it, and took it racing for a little while. So, needless to say, the son was totally oblivious to this. So, when the doctor got done, he takes the car back home, he sticks it back in the barn, all is said and done, everybody forgets about it until we dig it out 18 months ago. Now, normally it's a story of the kids stealing Pops stuff and going racing with it, you know? That's the way the story's usually told. They sneak it out of the garage, do some street racing. This way it's the other way around, though. Pops takes it from the sun when the sun's away at school and Dad goes and plays. Moving goes forward. and plays. It just runs her hard and does exactly. Original 390, Paul, big block, four-speed car. The thing runs like a million bucks. In fact, we still have that piece, numbers matching the whole nine for all those AMC enthusiasts that are going to hammer me later for putting my LS1 and a six-speed in it. But we are going to drive it. All right, so that's pretty cool because I'm always a fan of taking a vehicle, and you're going to soup it up. You're going to do all these fun things with it. Don't just trailer it around. I mean, there's no. more to life than a show car because you got to live it, and you got to breathe it, you got to smell it, and you got to, you know, be part of that vehicle. And with guys like Mike here and these guys working in the background, you can always fix things and dings and nicks you do to it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, that's the whole reason we're taking the car back. So that, you know, imagine the son drives it first, then the father races it. Imagine at the end of this whole awesome project we've got going, the father and son take a ride in the same car that's transitioned over a period of about 18 to 19 years. So it's going to be an awesome situation. Now, so this is a, the factory body itself. You've got no, no modifications to it whatsoever in terms of wheelbase, all that sort of stuff. It's, it's stock body, stock, stock hole inside. I don't see a roll cage in it. What's happening inside of it? Right now, what I did is when I got the car back, it actually still had the roll bar in it. It still had the original seats, 
the whole nine yards. We pulled the car totally apart. Some of the modifications we did when we got it over to No Coast Custom, which has been number one over there, we actually took the drip rail off. So we have a very, very smooth body line. These cars have such beautiful curves. You know, they didn't get a lot of exposure, but they're still beautiful cars with beautiful lines. Some of the things we did besides taking the drip rail off is we smoothed off the cow. We actually took the cow right out of the car, smoothed it off, just like glass. And most people didn't understand why we did that, but we just felt that being modern, updating a car, that's, that's something we would do nowadays if we had to build a car from scratch. So I think it put an excellent touch on the car. Yeah, I like what you got, where you've gone with that. I, it really, you don't want to modify these lines and take away from it, but I think accentuating what you've done, it's going to be a huge bonus when it's, when it's all said and done. Yeah. Now, my two cents is we put a turbocharger repair underneath the hood. I don't know if they're going to go there, but hey, that's talking to a guy who, who's lived and made his living behind the wheel of a turbocharged vehicle. So yeah. I'm a little biased, maybe. Yeah, and I can live with that. I mean, Bruno, for most of the guys that know, Bruno's complimentary champion this year. And what most people don't realize is he gets to chase, which is awesome for him. But for us that have to leave first and look in the mirror and poof, there he goes. That's why he's a champion. Well, one of the best parts of chasing with a turbocharged car is most times you can't hear you coming. It's a silent thunder. It's deadly, you know, deadly and uh, silent, which is great because before you know it, I'm alongside you patting the gas. And that's what it's all about with the turbocharged deal. And that's why you're champion, big guy. <laughs> well, you know what? It's been, it was a great year. And uh, I'm going to give a little props to my guys at AutoGeek.net, man. It was great. They came oh, on yeah. board with me two oh, years yeah. ago and we were able to bring home a championship in 2012. Max, you're awesome. Oh, Thank you. Good. All the guys behind the scenes who make it happen. Man, 2013, we're going back to back. That's the plan, at least. Wow. You're making it tough for the rest of us, Bruno. Well, we got a drag today. We only just started shaking down. It's got a lot of potential, man. So uh, we're pushing it hard next year. I think it would be just a little bit faster with some ProHeaderSystems.com merch collectors on it. Might have to work at that, buddy. I like where your head is, though. I like that. All right, let, let's, let's roll around here a second. I want to check back in with Mike and see if he's actually getting any work done. He likes to talk a lot, you know what I'm I saying? No, he's on the ball all the time. Mike, what's going on over there? Well, the good news is I got lots of help here today. Awesome. So, that, also, I just want to point out is since we already did the major cut and removed the orange peel, the next steps go a lot faster. So now we're refining our sanding marks with the 1500, so you don't have to sand each square inch as much. So it does go a lot faster. In fact, I think we're just about ready to finish knocking out the entire hood of the 1500 while you guys were over there talking. And then we're going to jump on the trunk lid. And when we get these two panels done, then we're going to start the machine sanding process. All right, Mike, I got a quick question for you. Now, there's some blue tape laid out on the hood, and I got an idea why it's here, but why don't you clarify for the people at home? Uh, good question. Now, the reason we put the tape line down here, this is the 3M vinyl tape, is every place you see this tape is a raised body line. And as you're sanding, as you see over here, we got some white slurry, and it can be hard to see where those raised body lines are. And a lot of times, because of gravity, the paint will flow over any of the high points. It'll be thinner there. So you you don't actually want to be sanding on the high points. And so that the blue tape, what it does is it protects the raised body line, and it's a visual indicator to show us where they're at when you start getting all that slurry on there. Yeah, you can kind of lose focus of where you're at at that point, and you hit those high spots, you could be in trouble. Yep, and we also taped off all the edges here, too, about a quarter, maybe an eighth inch in, and again, just to protect those. Okay, now, I got a question for you. Why you've got all hands on deck on just the hood and just the back panel? Why aren't we all attacking the the vehicle all as a whole at this point? Uh, well, there's a good reason for that. Uh, first of all, we have some people here that have never sanded by hand or machine before. So we're also using this as a training experience to show them how to do it. Nice. And we're working side by side. Ben over here. Uh, ben, what's the name of your body shop again? Uh, no Coast Custom and Rod Shop. Go ahead, say that again. Get a little closer. Uh, no Coast Custom and Rod Shop. Okay, so Ben not only is an experienced painter, he's an expert at sanding by hand and machine. So he's coupling up with some of the guys. I'm coupling up with them. Okay. And we're just kind of spending some one-on-one -on -one time showing them how to do this the right way because the last thing we want to do is make a mistake. Understood, yeah, especially you're this far into it. That's right. And then, again, after we get these two panels knocked out, I think everybody's comfort level will be brought up to a higher level. Then we're going to move over to the fenders and the doors. And then the last thing we're going to do is sand down the body. And if you look at it, because it's on a dolly and there's a lot more vertical panels there, it's just going to be a different type of sanding. So I want to bring everybody's comfort level up first sure. with the easy horizontal panels. Sure, and especially laid out on a flat plane like this, it makes it easier to work with. It makes it very, and you can see so much better, so. Mike, one more question for you. Now, and it's something I had for you earlier, because I'm not experienced in this kind of technique. You take a regular street car, I got a brand new Jeep Grand Cherokee off the lot. Okay. I go to do this, this process, what's gonna happen? 
chances are, even if you're really good, you're going to make what we call a whoops. Okay? <laughs> and uh, the reason for that, and one of the, and that's a, actually a really good question. What we're doing here is a custom wet sand cut and buff on a custom paint job. Okay, so Ben laid down four coats of clear. So there's plenty of film built to sand, cut, and polish because each one of those steps is going to take off a measurable amount of paint. Now the factory finish on the Jeep that you bought comes with about two mils of clear coat. Now if you've ever held a post-it note between your fingers and felt how thin that is, that's about three mils. Wow. So that means there's, that there's, it's non-existent almost. That's right. And the problem is, is you can kind of sand maybe a, a smooth flat area, but as soon as you get around some of the corners, by the time you sand it, compound it, and now you're polishing it, the chances are you could go through. And if okay. you go through, you're going to have to have that section repainted. And my wife will not be happy. I promise <laughs> you that's her vehicle. <laughs> no. So this is a custom process we're doing for a custom vehicle with an experienced painter like Ben who's put a lot of layers of clear coat on to really make this thing happen. So to do it on a factory vehicle, not, you're not your best bet. No, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, like I say, a real good expert can, but it's really something that should be reserved for a custom paint job where some planning has gone into the project. So the guy that owns the car can take Ben and say, hey, you know, no, not only do I want it painted, I want to have it sanded and buffed to really get that show car finished. And I'm willing to step up to the table and pay a little bit more for his time, labor, and materials. And paint isn't cheap, is it? And a qualified guy isn't cheap either. So you want to actually plan this kind of thing out ahead of time before it goes into the booth. One last question for you, Mike. You're spending a lot of time, a lot of energy to make this thing really shine. But it's a race car, am I right? It is a race car, street car. When it gets driven on the track, it's going to get some dings. It's going to get some nasty dirt, some retired rubber wrapped around it. Yep. Is that going to upset you? No, no, because I'm like you. You know, I'm not a big uh, 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 trailer queen person. Gotcha. I, I think they should be driven. I drive all my stuff. That's how we get along stuff. so well. Yep. So now, and besides that, after we leave here, Wes is going to be completely proficient on machine polishing. So if he gets any kind of scratches or marring, <laughs> I'm a, I think a Bob Eichelberg is going to leave him a flex polisher too. So he's going to have the tools he needs to keep that show car finish after we're all done. So he just passed the buck on you, Wes, man. Are you ready to handle the mission? <laughs> okay, oh, tell you well what, guys. Ready. I mean, let's move over part there. of the best thing of having Mike come to our shop is not only to learn the technique, but learn it from one of the best. You know, with AutoGeek.com sponsoring you, Mike was about the only real choice we had. Being that you and I have drag race routes, we've got to take care of our own. So one of the biggest guys that came up on